So today I want to go over some applications of the derivative named section 4.7 optimization problems. So basically what I'm going to go over is maximizing or minimizing what we call an objective function, a cost function, a profit uh, or revenue. How do we maximize the profit or the revenue and how to minimize the cost? Of course, uh, we will use all the rules, most of the rules that we've discussed so far in chapter four and chapter three. And uh, we will learn how to uh, optimize, means maximize or minimize a given uh, function. So the problems that we're going to face in this section, there's two categories of optimization problems. Two categories of optimization problems. And this is all written in the notes. Uh, the first one is problems that reduce to maximizing or minimizing a continuous function over a clo finite closed interval over a finite closed interval so thanks to the extreme value theorem in this case a maximum and a minimum are guaranteed in this case a max and a min are guaranteed thanks to the extreme value theorem extreme value theorem which is on page 281 in your text which basically says for every continuous function on a closed interval there's always a a maximum and a minimum on that interval okay so whenever you're dealing with a continuous function and the interval that you're dealing with is finite then you are guaranteed a maximum and a minimum this is the kind of a problem that we're going to deal with the second kind the first kind so this is the second kind problems that reduce problems that reduce to again maximizing or minimizing a continuous function but this time the interval not finite or closed so over a over an infinite interval or finite it can be non closed or a finite non closed which means open interval in this case good luck in this case in this case there is no guarantee there is no guarantee for a max or a min or a min use the graph first derivative test and ingenuity to get your result So the first example that I want to show you is the, a classical uh, optimization problem, example one. It says find the dimensions, and you can try that at home, of a rectangle with parameter 100 feet whose area is as large as possible whose area is as large as possible so basically if you take a thread a thread of 100 feet and you try to make rectangles you know measure the length and the width times length and width find the area change the length and width and start finding is 
you want, you're wondering which length and width would give you the largest possible area. So, so we have a rectangle, right? So I'm just going to label it the rectangle X and Y, length and width. And what we know, we have 100 feet all around, so that's 2X plus 2Y, which means X plus Y equals 50 feet. And we want to maximize the area of that rect rectangle. What we know area is length times width, so it's X times Y. Okay, so what are the steps for, for maximizing or minimizing uh, problems? The first step, I'm, re I'm reading the steps that are in your notes on page 50. Okay, I'm not going to write them down. They're, they're in there. Okay, they're in the notes. So you want to draw an appropriate figure and label the quantities that are relevant to the problem. So this is the figure X and Y. Find a formula for the quantity to be maximized or minimized. So the formula is what? Area equals X times Y. We're maximizing the area. Use the conditions stated in the problem to eliminate variables. Express the function to be maximized or minimized into one variable. As you can see, the area that we're trying to maximize is written in terms of X and Y. So what step three says is the I either have to eliminate X and Y because I want to differentiate next, find the derivative. So I want a as just like f of x as a function of x, we want a as a function of x or y, not both of them. So we can differentiate easily. So we want to eliminate one of them right there. We're going to say y equals 50 minus x. Put it in there. So now we have the area as 50x minus x squared, which is a quadratic function. Uh, find so step number four find the interval of possible values for this variable so for x what are the possible values for x from the physical restriction and the problem set we know that x plus y is 50 so x cannot be more than 50 and of course the width of a rectangle so it's what between 0 and 50 okay all right so we got that use extreme value theorem if possible First derivative test, second derivative test for maximizing, minimizing to gain the solution. Well, if we find, so either way, we're going to find the derivative. So this is a of x. So dA by dx equals zero to find the critical values. So 50 minus 2x equals zero, 2x equals 50, x equals 25. So x is the critical value. It doesn't give me a maximum or minimum. Well, you can see that my function is continuous and the interval is closed. So we can use extreme value theorem. And the extreme value theorem says we're going to find the critical values and the points, the endpoints. So at x equals 0, at x equals 5, and x equals 25. Sorry, x is 50, not 50. So we're going to do a find the value of the function. The largest is going to give you the maximum. a of 0 is 0. a of 50 is also 0. And 25 times 25 is 625 square feet. So this is definitely going to be the maximum. So what this says, this says the maximum is going to be used by getting a rectangle, I mean a square, 25 on each side. Okay, x is 25 and y is 25 for an area of 625 square feet. And you can try that, like I said, at home and see this is true. Okay, another classical example uh, in optimization is the uh, Norman window. So here's what I'm talking about. Find the dimensions of the Norman window, and I'll draw the picture for you, with largest area. If its parameter is 10 meters, its parameter is 10 meters, and I would say see picture below. So this is 
what I will have if I have a question like this, a picture of the normal window, which is a rectangle and on top of the rectangle is half a circle. This normal window has uh, for the base of the circle, which is length or the width of the rectangle is 2R. So this is R on e either side and this is L. This is all given to you. And they want the dimensions of the normal window if it's 10 meters all around. Okay, if it's 10 meters all around. Okay, so let's look at this again. What the steps say. Draw a figure and label the quantities that was given to us. Find a formula for the quantity to be maximized or minimized. So what are we trying to maximize or minimize? Largest area. So we want the largest area. So we want to find the area and maximize. So we want to maximize the area. So A equals, it's the area of the circle, half the circle, which is F pi R square plus the area of the rectangle, which is 2R times L, okay, 2R times L. So we have two letters here. We know what the next step is. It says use the conditions stated in the problem to eliminate variables, express the function to be maximized or minimized in terms of one variable. So we wanna eliminate R or L. So we know the parameter all around is 10 meters. So we have 2R, 2R plus 2L, 2R plus 2L plus this portion, which is the half a circle. The parameter is 2 pi R, half of that is pi R. And all this has to add up to 10. So now, uh, we can either eliminate L or R. It's since R is squared there, it's probably easier for us to isolate L, so no squaring. So 2L equal 10 minus pi R minus 2R. So what I did, I subtract pi R and the 2R. So L equals 10 over 2 is 5. This is half pi R and then 2R over 2 is R. I'm going to take all this and put it in there to get a, but now a is going to be a of r, so it's half pi r squared plus 2r, 5 minus 1 half pi r minus r. So the area in terms of the radius of that window, it's half pi r squared, distribute, it's 10r minus two times a half is one pi r square minus two r square. Combine like terms. So we have uh, half pi r square minus pi r square is negative one half pi r square plus 10 r minus two r square. So we got a of r then find the interval of possible values for this variable. So what are the possible values for R? So basically, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be 10 all around, uh, 10 all around. And you can see that, uh, if you try to isolate R, If you try to isolate R, I would say R cannot be more than five because two R, this is two R, you know. So if you have R plus two L plus pi R equals 10 and 10 minus 2L equals R times pi plus 2. So R is 10 minus 2L over pi plus 2. So you can see like if L is close to 0, that's 10 over 5 almost. Uh, and as L as L gets bigger, L can L can go up to 5, right? 
because otherwise this would be zero it would be more than so l go up to five so if l is five r is zero now if l is almost zero r would be five over almost five so r is actually it can be even one less than one so i would say r is between zero and one okay uh anyway so so we know r cannot be zero in this case so what we could do instead of using uh the extreme value theorem which we can't we're going to use the second derivative test i'll explain that to you in a second so anyway so this is r now so then we want to use the first derivative test or the second derivative test again the interval is not closed so we cannot use the first the extreme value theorem so a prime of r equals negative pi r right two times negative one half and then r becomes a here plus 10 minus 4r equals 0 so 10 equals 4r plus pi r what i did i moved these factor out the r so r is 10 over 4 plus pi which is roughly 1.4 meters and if you find l if you want to they want the dimensions to find l l is 5 minus r minus half pi r it's also roughly 1.4 meters okay which is that you can check that out now how do we know this is uh this is the the, the dimension the normal window with largest area its parameter is 10 meters well if 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 they're telling us that there is a maximum and this is the only critical value then this must be the maximum right they're not saying check they're saying find so that's enough actually because say, you can say this since this is the only critical value and we're guaranteed to have a maximum because it says find it it doesn't say check if there is a maximum it says find the maximum so this is the maximum now if you want to use calculus to prove it, the easiest way, you can still do the first derivative test, but the easiest way is the second derivative. Look, the critical value is 1.4, so you do the second derivative, which is negative pi minus 4. Usually you do the second derivative at 1.4, and it's negative, right? Because because r is it's independent of r, so this is like negative uh, 3.14, 1.14. So since second derivative at 1.4 is negative then at 1.4 at r equal negative 1.4 we have a maximum okay we have a maximum all right next example that i've also uh, you know asked about on tests is find the volume of the largest the volume of the largest uh, circular cylinder that can be inscribed in a sphere Of radius six centimeters so we want to find the volume of the largest circular cylinder that can be inscribed in a sphere of radius six centimeters so draw an appropriate figure and label the quantities relevant to the problem so we want to so a sphere when we when we do a cross section on the plane we get a circle And we want to inscribe in that sphere a right circular cylinder of radius 6 centimeters. Uh, a right circular cylinder with radius r of the top and the bottom. We don't know the radius of the cylinder. We want to figure that out. 
Well, we know that the radius of the sphere is 6 centimeters. And we want to find the volume of the largest circular cylinder. Okay. Find a formula for the quantity to be maximized or minimized. So we're, we're maximizing the volume of the largest circular cylinder. The formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius of the top square times the height. And this is the height. All this is the height of the cylinder. Let's label it as H. Uh, use the conditions stated in the problem to eliminate the variables. So we want to eliminate either R or H. Now you can see that if this is R and this is 30, this is 6 using the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle, this quantity is, you have 6 squared is R squared. Let's say this is X. So x squared plus r squared equals 6 squared, x squared equals 36 minus r squared. So x is square root of 36 minus r squared. And this is the same. This is also x because it's the same triangle, right? 6 and r. So h is twice that much. So h is 2 square root of 36 minus r squared. Now, we could, we could put that in here, it looks easy, but I'll tell you what, if we do that, then we have to deal with the product rule where, because you're gonna have r squared times the root of 36 minus r. So there's some, some work for the derivative. The other way out is if you divide the two and then square both sides. So you get h squared over 4 equals 36 minus r squared. So r squared is 36 minus h squared over 4. So I moved here, moved that there. Look at this. So, so we take this and put it in for r squared. No squaring any. So it's pi 36 minus a quarter h squared times h. It's a lot easier to differentiate, especially if we distribute first so v equals 30 pi h minus quarter pi h q so this is v of h now so v prime of h or dv by dh equals 36 pi minus u times the three by a quarter and then you get h square so v prime equals zero so we get 3 over 4 pi h squared equals 36 pi. I move this over here. Uh, h squared equals 36 pi divided by 3 over 4 pi. The pi is cancelled out, which is 36 times 4 thirds. h squared equals uh, 48. So h equals 4 root 3. And then what is r? Because we want to find the volume. That's what they're asking for. Again, since this is the only critical value, it must be a point of maximum because they're saying fine. They're not saying check. If they want, it, if you, they want you to check, you can find the second derivative. I'll do that right now. If you find the second derivative, you, that's a zero because it's a constant. Two times three is six fourths or three halves pi h. If you do v double prime at four root three, it's negative three over two pi times four root three, which is negative. That's all I care about since the second derivative at four root three is negative. So h equals four root three is a point of max. Okay, critical value when you plug it into the equation of the second derivative. If it gives you a negative, you get a max. If it gives you a positive, you get a minimum. Okay, so now we want to find V. Uh, so to find V easy, easily, we need R or R squared. We can do it in here where, where, for H, but I think for H, but it's easier if we just find R or R squared because R squared 
is 36 minus 8 squared over 4. So 8 squared is 48. 48 over 4 is 12. So 36 minus 12 is 24. So V equals pi r squared h. It's 24 times 4 root 3. So the maximum V is 96 pi root 3 centimeter cubed. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot and a lot of examples, okay? So the next one that I want to do, I'm skipping the one on 53, page 53 and 54, so you can try that out. I'm going to page 55 in your notes, and I'm going to go over 42, page 344. 42 page 344. So let's see what's in there. It says a poster is to have an area of 180 inches square uh, with one inch margins at the bottom and sides and two inches margin at the top. What dimensions will give the largest printed area? So we're going to start by drawing the figure. So we're talking about a poster. It's 180 inches square. So the area of the poster is 180 square inches. Uh, with one inch margins at the bottom and sides and two inches margin at the top so bottom and sides one inch margin roughly and two inches margin on top so this is two inches supposedly this is one inch one inch one inch. It says, what dimensions will give the largest printed area? What dimensions will give the largest printed area? Okay, so draw a figure. So if we assume, since we're talking about the poster, so the width of the poster is y inches and the length is x for the whole thing. Then the uh, so the printed area, this would be there's two here, two inches, and there's one, so this would be y minus three, and this would be one and one, so it's x minus two, right? The whole thing is x, you take away one on each side, so we're talking about the printed area right there. Okay, again, there's one at the bottom, two on top, that's why it's minus three. Okay, find a formula for the quantity to be maximized or minimized. So we, we, we want the dimensions of the largest printed area. So, the, so I'll just use A for the largest printed area, and it's going to be x minus two times y minus three. x minus two times y minus three. Okay. And now we want to use the conditions to eliminate the variable when, I, when eliminate x or y. So we know the area of the poster is 180, that's x times y. So y is 180 over x. We put that in there. So area, that's a of x, x minus 2 times 180, x to the negative 1 minus 3. So I know I'm going to have to do derivative, but I'd rather foil first. So 180 minus 3x minus 360x to the negative 1 plus 6. So a prime of x to find the critical value, that's 0, negative 3 plus 360x to the negative 2 equals 0. So 360 3 equals 360 over x squared, x squared equals 120, so x 
equals 2 to 30 which is roughly 10.95 inches and we know this is going to give us the maximum uh, if you want if you're wondering what the what the range of values of x is you know we have x times y is 180 so uh, we know that x minus 2 has to be positive right so as to be greater than 2 and y minus 3 has to be positive so y has to be greater than 3 but y is 180 over x so 180 is greater than 3x x is less than 60 so x is greater than 2 and less than 60 which which makes sense okay and if you want the dimensions of the largest area it's x minus 2 times y minus 3 x is 10.95 minus 2 and y y is 180 over x so 180 over 10.95 minus 3 you can figure that out okay the last one that i want to do is 80 page 347 trying to do a variety of problems so you won't have trouble doing the homework hopefully 80 page 347 you can see there's a lot of problems in there okay there's a picture for us so. it says a steel pipe is being carried down a hallway that is nine feet wide uh, at the end of the hall there's a right angle turn into a narrower hallway six feet wide uh, what is the length of the longest pipe that can be carried horizontally around the corner all right so basically have let me try to redraw this picture so we have some kind of figure like this this is six feet and this is nine feet if i'm not mistaken yeah nine feet six feet and we want to draw a pipe so yeah like this see if i've got it down a hallway that's nine feet wide at the end of the hall there's a right angle turn into a narrower hallway six feet wide what is the length of the longest pipe that can be carried horizontally around the corner so they want this thing so there's two pieces for this length l1 and l2 and let's say this is angle theta which is exactly going to be this angle right these two angles are equal okay so if you look at uh the steps draw a picture find a formula for the quantity to be maximized or minimized so we want to maximize L, which is L1, L2, but what is what is these? Let's find what these are. If you look at this angle, we have adjacent and hypotenuse. This angle has opposite and hypotenuse. So for this angle, for the top one, I'm going to say cosine theta equals 6 over L1, adjacent over hypotenuse. So L1 equals 6 over cosine theta. And... For this triangle, we have sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So L2 is 9 over sine theta. So now we have L equals L1, which is there, plus L2, which is there. So now to find the derivative, or we can write this as cosine theta to make it easier to differentiate, and 9 sine theta to the negative one, negative one so dl by d theta or l prime theta equals negative six cosine theta to the negative two times derivative of cosine which is negative sine 
plus negative 9 sine theta to the negative 2 derivative of sine is cosine and we want this to equal 0 to find the critical values so let's see what we got here we got negative 6 times negative sine is 6 sine theta and then cosine theta negative 2 is at the bottom cosine squared theta this is minus 9 cosine theta and then this goes to the bottom as sine squared theta equals 0 move this over here so 6 sine theta over cosine squared theta equals 9 cosine theta over sine squared theta uh, So if we cross multiply, we get 6 sine cube theta equals 9 cosine cube theta. So if we divide by cosine cube to get tangent cube, so we get tangent cube theta equals 9 and actually divided by 6. So tangent theta is the cube root of 9 over 6, which if you put in your calculator, theta is tangent inverse, cube root of 3 over 2, roughly 49 degrees. And now we can find L1 and L2. L1 is 6 over cosine. L1 is 6 over cosine 49. L2 is 9 over sine 49. And that gives me the answer. This is roughly 9.14. And L2 is roughly 11.93. So L is roughly 21 feet, if you add them up. And that's going to give you the largest pipe that can go on that corner. And that's it for section 4.7. We don't have to do 4.8. So next I'm going to go over 4.9 with you.